Welcome back to the second episode of the Canon Digital Learning Center series on time lapse photography. I'm Canon Explorer of Light, Vincent Laferre. Today we're going to be focusing on the Canon EOS 5D Mark III and how to set that camera, as well as an intervalometer, in this case a Canon TC80N3. The TC80N3 has multiple sophisticated functions, but in our case we're just going to focus on the intervalometer function. Okay, so let's say you want to go ahead and shoot a frame off every three seconds. Go ahead and push the mode button until you see the intervalometer or INT mode highlighted. Then find the right scroll wheel and push that button in. You'll notice that the numbers blink. Go ahead and dial in your seconds, in this case three seconds, so zero, three, and push in the button again. Then you're ready to go ahead and shoot. At this point, all you need to do is press the start stop button and you're off and running. Now let's look at some key settings that will help you in time-lapse photography. First, I'd recommend that you disable the auto power off function. This will make sure the camera stays awake as long as you need it to. Second, I'd recommend you turn off the review section altogether on the rear LCD. This will make sure the LCD stays off during your entire time lapse and you save battery power. I'd also recommend you turn off the autofocus setting on your lenses. That way the lens does not search for focus during your time lapse, which can be a real problem. And also if the lens has it, turn off the image stabilization. Next, we're going to go ahead and insert a memory card into the camera. I always recommend you format the card before every single shoot. That ensures there's no corruption on the card, and of course it's empty and ready to go. As far as memory cards go, always go for the biggest and fastest cards you can get. The last thing you want to have happen is to run out of space right in the middle of the beautiful moment in your time lapse, or to have a card that's simply too slow to keep recording the images fast enough. Next, you're going to make a decision on what format to shoot in. Now, I know JPEGs are much easier to work with, they're smaller, they're easier to process, but RAW is really the way to go and the only way to go for time lapse photography. As you'll see in these examples, you have so much more latitude for corrections and creative control with RAW files than you do with JPEG. This is especially useful when you blow out a highlight or a cloud or you need to dig out a shadow, for example. Next, I recommend you set your white balance. If you're shooting during the daytime, obviously you're going to want to shoot a daytime setting with either sunny, shade, cloudy, if you're shooting with artificial light, you're going to want to select either a tungsten or fluorescent mode, or you can actually dial in the actual degrees Kelvin. With all this said, if you're shooting in RAW, you don't really have to set anything because you can fix all this in post. The one thing you should not do, however, especially if you're shooting in JPEG, is choose auto white balance, as that can shift during your time lapse and lead to some pretty poor results. Then you're going to want to set your ISO, aperture, and shutter speed. The key goal here is to get what we call a good digital negative, or a rich image without blown out highlights or crushed blacks. What this means is you want an image that has a wide range of information that you can work with in post. There are a few important decisions you're going to need to make when you set a lot of these settings. For example, in terms of aperture, you may want to select a smaller aperture so you get more depth of field, so that everything is in focus from the foreground to the background, especially in wide vistas. Also, in terms of shutter speed, you're going to want to make sure you have one that's fast enough to stop any camera shake or motion blur. One of the key rules in digital photography is to always protect your highlights. Once you blow out a white or a cloud, you simply can't pull it back. There's no information there. So when you're in doubt as to how to expose your image, always err on the side of underexposing or making a little bit of a darker image to protect those big highlight points in your image. Now Canon offers you two really good tools to make sure you don't blow out those highlights. The first is called the Highlight Alert feature. This is what you can see when you go ahead and push playback. You'll see a blinking part of your image which shows you something that's been overexposed. You really want to avoid that. The second is a slightly more complex. It's called a histogram. It's basically a simple curve on the back of your LCD. and You want to make sure that you have a nice bell curve. Nothing too far to the left which means the image is too dark. Nothing too far to the right, which means the image is too bright, especially spikes on either side. You'll also want to make sure that your live view settings are set to the still image exposure function, not the video. This way you can get the proper estimation of your exposure. Here's how you engage live view. Another great benefit of live view is that you can actually zoom in or punch into your image and see critical focus on any part of the sensor. This is really useful, for example, when you're shooting wide open or with tilt shift lenses. You can also use the grid function on the menu settings. This is one of my favorite features. It allows me to make sure that my image is perfectly composed, that my horizons are level, and also to pay attention to the rule of thirds. I do recommend, however, that once you're ready to shoot, you go ahead and turn the live view function off to conserve your battery power. One of the final decisions you're going to need to make is what mode to shoot in. Personally, I almost always shoot everything in the manual exposure mode. This absolutely ensures that my exposure stays even during the entire length of the time lapse. One of the dangers of shooting one of the automatic modes is that during a long time lapse, you can almost always expect something to change, notably in terms of lighting. And if that happens, the camera is going to try to adjust for it automatically. 
and in doing so might ruin the entire time lapse. Now there are certain circumstances where you will need to use some of the more automated modes such as aperture priority. Uh, for example, when you have a sunrise, uh, the exposure change between nighttime and full sun obviously is too great for the sensor to capture when set to manual. There are two main automatic modes that I use. Aperture priority, this allows me to set an f-stop and the camera is going to go ahead and adjust the shutter speed during the time lapse to adjust for exposure. Inversely, I can also select the shutter priority mode, which will keep a constant shutter and change the aperture. The one thing you gotta keep in mind about that is that when that happens, when your aperture changes over time, the depth of field will change as well, and that might lead to some undesirable effects. So here are a few examples of the exact same scene shot both in aperture priority mode versus the manual exposure mode. You'll see that when the light changes gradually, aperture priority mode can work really quite well. However, you'll find you'll get much greater success using the manual exposure mode, especially in a scene where you have clouds coming in and out and the light is constantly fluctuating. Another feature you might need is called mirror lockup. This actually locks the mirror up during the exposure and prevents camera shake. This is really useful when you have long lenses or especially long exposures. Lastly, I'd recommend you turn off Auto Lighting Optimizer, as well as the Highlight Tone Priority, and pretty much any function that might cause your exposure or image to fluctuate during a long time lapse. All right, so now with your camera set, you're ready to shoot. Let's recap the key principles when setting up your camera for time lapse photography. First, turn off all automatic functions. Second, shoot in the manual mode whenever possible. Third, shoot in the raw format. And fourth, always protect your highlights. Once again, this is Vincent LaFerre, and I'll see you in episode three.